Uh, all right, great to see everybody. I uh, feel like I was up here a couple days ago, so we'll see what, what questions you have. What's, uh, what's it up to you about Arthur Hall last since he's been here? Uh, yeah, just you know, he's got great energy and, and um, provides uh, a little fire to you know for, to the nickel position out there. And um, it's a, some a lot of things that we've done that are uh, not so consistent with how he's done things. So, so considering that learning curve, we're actually impressed with you know how, how fast he's picked everything up. But uh, just just a fun guy to be around and uh, just attacking what we're asking him to do. So. Uh, it's huge. It's huge. You know, he's obviously a vital, vital part of our, of our operation, and uh, he spearheads the charge. So, um, you know, he picks it up very fast. He makes it seem very easy, uh, and I think the guys follow that lead. You know, and um, if 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 he's going and he's and, he, and he's rolling and rocking and rolling, then the guys fall in line. Then you know, things just happen a little bit more seamlessly than you know. So it's it's good. It's great as a coach. Rock going down, is it even more important right now for some of these other corners, especially the young ones, to kind of start separating themselves? I wouldn't say it's more important. I, I'd, I'd just say it's always important. You know, that's something that we're looking for. Obviously, we've got a great uh, competition going on, you know, uh, opposite Marlin. So uh, just, you know, there's going to be more reps to be had for sure. We'll see how long it lasts. But, uh, you know, th I, think, I think the focus has been there from day one with those guys. Mike, we've heard, uh, we've heard various uh, players talk about what they've gotten out of their interactions with Chuck Smith. Um, yeah. you think, I mean, not just outside linebackers, but do you think he has an unusual ability to sort of relate as a teacher? I would say he's got a great ability to, to relate. You know, I, I, any coach you want to be able to relate to your players so you have a good relationship. I think that's an important thing. Uh, it starts with John and, and who, who, who he hires, you know, and who's on our staff. I'd speak to everybody on our staff. I think everybody does a great job of uh, building rapport with our players, and you can build that trust and that connectivity so, you know, we can stay aligned when we're asking, you know, when we're working through that back and forth of coaching guys up and asking, asking things from them. And I think you see that the players, you know, play harder and, and you get more out of them when you have that relationship. So, but Chuck's, Chuck's just like everybody else, but he's doing a great job. Coach, we saw Jalen taking a lot of the reps today outside or opposite of Marlon. What about him making capable of stepping up so he be needed there for a long period of time? Well, J Jalen's a guy that we're really excited when we drafted him. So he's, he's got a lot of ability, and uh, he's a very smart player. He's, he's versatile. He can play multiple spots. Uh, but, you know, this is an opportunity for him to go, to go show what he can do and, and, and see if he can earn himself a job. So opportunities out there. Has he improved at all? any different from or Has he looked better, like, throughout camp? How much has he improved? Come on, Jalen? Uh, yeah, I would say it's a gradual improvement, you know. But it, with, the whole, with the whole defense right now, we're in, we're in week two, we're in it, we're in pads. Um, the emphasis is let's go, all right? We're not waiting around, it's not process for result, we're rolling, okay? So we're, we're trying to get ready for, for next week when we tee it off against the Eagles, and then ultimately, you know, against Houston week one. So uh, we won't pedal to the metal right now, and I think he's right there with the rest of the crew. Mike, during his time here, Clay has really established himself as a vocal leader. Uh, since he left, who's really like stepped up on the defensive line and established himself since like the new voice? Yeah, I think we spoke to it uh, the other day very well. I mean, we got a great group right there, and they're not necessarily a young group. I mean, they, they're not, not green in that way. They're young, but they're not green. I mean, off the top of my head, Michael Pierce has done a great job. He's been here all offseason. Brent Urban done a great job. Uh, Broderick Washington is a, is a stalwart in the middle for us, leads through action and not his words. Justin Matabike, same, same deal, comes to work every day, plays extremely hard. I th there's a group that feeds off one another. Um, Tra Travis Jones, second year guy, you would never guess he's a second year guy. The list goes on. So, is there one guy that's kind of the head, head of the group? You know, maybe, maybe not, maybe by day, but really proud of their approach, uh, the competitiveness with them, and the, the ability. You know, the, hey, look, they're, they're fighting for pass rush snaps too. So, a lot of competition in that room as well. Mike, how hard is it to get your players to work on tackling when there's very little to no tackling allowed? And has that impacted what you see? Games in terms of guys' abilities. That's a great question. The tackling, tackling, tackling is a lost art, you know, and, and the rules really uh, make it challenging, like you said, you know, to do it. So you have to be creative in what you do. It now, I will say, when we practice, it's always angles to the ball, making sure we have the ball viced, um, tearing off blocks, making sure we're in position to make a tackle, and then the tempo kind of dictates how we finish. So I, I'm actually very pleased with when we we're in the pads. We've been able to cup the ball very well. 
And we talk about, you know, finishing in a dominant position and then the ball, ball carrier goes backwards and staple tackling. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that with our guys. Uh, but we definitely, we definitely want to thug guys up, wrap them up, and make sure we know we're insuring tackles. Adolphe has talked about how he's going to embrace kind of more of a powerful aspect of his pass rush. Does that require a kind of different mentality when you're out there on the edge trying to get out of the QB? Well, I think any good pass rusher is going to start with power. You know, I think if you just go down the list of the top pass rushers throughout the league, they have some sort of power. If you, if you have no... If you have no threat of power, you know, tackles are just not going to respect it and the rest of your stuff isn't going to be set up as well. But if you watch, he's got a great long arm and, um, you know, he's working on that. I know that he's working on it today with, uh, with Chuck out there during Indy. So um, that's a power. I think it showed up last year on tape, too. I think, you're gonna, I think you see when you turn the tape on, is he's got a great long arm and then the counter's off it. But uh, just like any great pass rusher, you've got to have that element, you know, if you're you know, going to have any success. Did you feel like the end of his season last year was something he could really build on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think uh, you go in with an idea of what you have to build to. It, that picture is clear from the from the get go, but it's still within the framework of who do we have and what do they do and what can they do, and then we can kind of take it as it goes from right there. So, um, I know I've alluded to this a lot of times, but when our personnel became into focus throughout the middle of the year, it really dictated what we could and couldn't do schematically and narrowed the focus, and I think that's when we took off. So um, definitely that picture is clear on a, earlier at this point in time. Mike, uh, your for Kyle Hammett. Uh, yeah, um, Kyle, like we've said, he's a guy that we're going to be able to move around right now. He's trying to, we're trying to get him really good at safety with the ability to move him to a different, different spot. So uh, please where he's at. Uh, you know, I think he started out camp really well, hasn't had as much ball production over the last couple of days, so that's something that we're going to challenge him, you know, to be able to do moving forward throughout camp and going into the season. What have you seen from Caillou? Any of his pedigree growing up around him with his dad, is that noticeable when he's out here on the field or in the meetings? Yeah, I'd say it definitely shows itself off, off the field and in the building. I mean, you love his approach. He's here every morning working out when I'm in there with the guys and going through the process. The training room speaks very highly of him. Uh, and his approach and his, his mentality on the field. My message to him was just, is let's go, let's go compete. All right, stay, take the step every day that you need to. We had a conversation actually this morning. Steve Smith talks about rookies making a play a day, and I just encourage him to go for it. You know, go for it so you can get those plays on tape where guys are going to remember that you know those those positive plays that you that you're making. Great, thank you. Thanks so much.